Hello and welcome to another An Old Man Watches. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about Desperado from 1995. Uh, and in this movie, a nameless drifter, no, referred to only as El Mariachi, wages a one-man war of revenge against the crime boss Bucho. Um, the stranger, El Mariachi, takes his name from his outfit, which is you know, strongly reminiscent of that of a member of a mariachi band. Um, He's a deadly hand with a gun, but he's going to need to be, as the odds are very much stacked against him. Bucho has a veritable army of henchmen to call upon, and he owns practically everyone in town. Uh, even the beautiful woman who shelters El Mariachi from his enemies is beholden to this crime boss. The bookstore she runs is a front for Bucho's organisation to launder drug money. Of course, on the other hand, Bucho doesn't have El Mariachi's blazing, soulful eyes. So it's probably no surprise that her loyalties change as the war between the two men hots up. So that's basically that's basically where this movie is coming from. Um, it's the first English language film of Robert Rodriguez, uh, introducing uh, the English-speaking world uh, and its audience to his bombastic plots, quirky humour, and stylish visuals. Uh, and it you know it has all three of those things in it. Uh, but let's talk about what else it features. So first of all, Desperado is technically a sequel to Rodriguez's first feature film called El Mariachi, uh, which he filmed in Spanish um, for a mere $7,000. It was subsequently acquired after it won awards at uh, various um, festivals, film festivals. It was subsequently acquired by, I think, Columbia, who spent a couple hundred thousand dollars cleaning it up for a wide release. Um, uh, but it was very much, yeah, originally filmed for $7,000, a significant chunk of which actually came from a R R Rodriguez taking part in medical trials as a paid volunteer. Um, so yeah, technically a sequel to, to the movie El Mariachi, El Mariachi. And I say technically a sequel uh, because, number one, the, the narrative connection is, is very loose. Uh, and number two, there are some very strong echoes between the plots of the two films. In some ways, this movie feels more like a bigger budget remake or update of the earlier film than a separate project. That's not to say that there are no differences between the two films, of course. Uh, the biggest one, in fact, is that the protagonist in the original is genuinely a mariachi player uh, who becomes embroiled in a battle with the mob when they mistake him for a black-clad assassin. Uh, but certain story elements uh, definitely feel like Yep, this is the same thing from the first movie, just kind of redone with more money. Uh, and in particular, the whole uh, our hero hides out with a beautiful woman whose business turns out to be a front for the crime boss subplot is just repeated verbatim from El Mariachi. Exactly, it's, it's a bar rather than the bookshop, but exactly the same basic plot line is in El Mariachi. Um, so yeah, there's some, there's some elements of this that are very much direct retreads of plot elements from the first film. Uh, but you can watch it as a sequel. You can also just watch it as a standalone movie. The, the film does tell you everything you need to know. It doesn't assume that you've seen the like you know $7,000 movie that was filmed in Spanish. Secondly, um, Desperado is a very stylish film, because you know, it's a Rodriguez film, uh, but it is certainly not a subtle one. Uh, Robert Rodriguez has never shied away from absurdist tongue-in-cheek elements, even in his more serious features like this one, and he actively embraces them in some of his films, like Spy Kids and um, uh, The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Yes, had to make sure I had that the right way around. Um, so yeah, and that's that's true here, even though this is a quote-unquote serious feature. The villain is gleefully and unrepentantly sociopathic. The good guy has a friend who keeps a rocket launcher in his guitar t guitar case. And the film loves its bombastic, over-the-top action sequences. It loves those so much, in fact, that it does occasionally overdo them. Uh, in particular, I'd call out the opening of the film. Uh, it involves... So the, it in, first off, it involves Steve Buscemi's character wandering into a bar and launching into this long, rambling monologue about El Mariachi's latest gunfighting rampage, complete with multiple flashbacks to said rampage, before the man himself turns up at the same bar and indulges in a second full-length dose of shooty shooty. Uh, now, both sequences taken alone are good scenes. Buscemi is excellent in his segment, of course, uh, and the following fight is a dynamic one. Um, but it feels like a very long single sequence and it's it overstays its welcome i think it's it's like 20 
20 odd minutes to me it, it goes on too long we've kind of seen the scene and then we see the scene again um so yeah a little bit overdone um the movie is quite thin on plot in general relying very heavily on action uh, and finally um I've already mentioned that Desperado was the first English language film for Rodriguez as a director. It was also the uh, Anglosphere launch pad for the careers of Antonio Banderas and Selma Hayek. Now, both of them had already established successful careers in Spanish language cinema, uh, TV and, and, and film, uh, but they had not yet crossed over into the more lucrative world of mainstream US cinema, where, let's face it, all of the money is, or well, most of the money is. Both of them enjoyed considerable success in Hollywood off the back of these roles. Uh, so if you want to see where that success began and, and kind of why they had uh, good careers in Hollywood, not that I'm saying that they wouldn't have without this film, because maybe they would, but this is the film that in real life gave them the opportunity to, to really get in front of English-speaking audiences and become a big deal in you know the Anglosphere. Uh, and Rodriguez has gone on to use his own success to provide a number of important opportunities to other actors from the Spanish-speaking world. Which, you know, to my mind, given the rather waspy nature of typical Hollywood casting, is no bad thing, I think. Uh, let's have a little bit more diversity. Um, so that's the three things I wanted to talk about regarding Desperado. I will confess, I actually like El Mariachi more. It feels, it's obviously a much less slick, sophisticated, um, extravagant film, but it feels to me more raw and real. Um, but it's a good movie nonetheless, and the Once Upon a Time in Mexico, the third film in the series, was also very good. Um, but yes, that's what I had to say about this. Next time, Puppet Master 3, Tulan's Revenge. Um, yeah. That's an interesting one. It's a, it's a change of direction for the, for the franchise, um, and I knew we'll talk about it next time. In the meantime, uh, thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it.